You are tuned in to The Tea Side, a podcast where we talk total health, life lessons, and music. I'm your host, licensed therapist, doula, and music enthusiast, Tanya D. Now let's get into it. Hello, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, and happy Black History Month. You are tuned in to season two, episode one of the T-Side podcast, and I'm your host, Tanya D. If this is your first time listening, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the episode. If you like what you hear, be sure to leave a review and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. It would certainly help me out. So right up front today, I am going to give you the song of the day, and it is Welcome Back by Mace. Or if you're old school, you can go with Welcome Back, the theme from the show, Welcome Back, Cotter. Either one, take your pick. I've been away for about six weeks, but it feels like forever. I actually miss talking to you. So today I just wanted to give you all an update on what I've been up to and what to expect for season two. I actually intended to drop my 10th episode at the end of last year, but it got pushed out until the first week of January. And I was actually proud of myself and felt a sense of accomplishment for being able to say that I have successfully done a podcast. Unfortunately, it was also the week that my uncle lost his fight with COVID-19. He had been in the hospital for most of December, and when he passed away, I took it harder than I expected to, and I literally had to stop and sit with myself and ask why was I taking it so hard, because I didn't feel like I was that close to him. I would always ask my aunt how he was doing or say to her, tell my Uncle Rick I said hi, but that was about it. As I was sitting at home watching his services on my TV and listening to everyone talk about how much he was there for my aunt, how he took care of everyone and all the great memories they had of him, I started crying uncontrollably and I just could not figure out why I was so sad. You know, he was a quiet man and he never complained about anything. He would always say, whatever Geneva wants. He took care of her, her kids, and he was always there for his nieces, nephews, and grandkids. He would show tough love when needed, but it always seemed to be with a gentle touch. I think he was an angel here on earth. I would always check on him just because I knew he was taking care of everyone else. And then it hit me. That was our relationship. I was always the one to check on him. I always watched the quiet ones. You know how they say, check on your strong friends? Well, that's what I would do. He liked the bacon, was known for making his cupcakes. So when he asked me to make him one of my split lemon cakes for his birthday one year, I was honored because I always wanted to make sure he was good. When I would see him and ask him how he was doing, he always said, I'm all right. I would just smile, shake my head and say, "Mm mm-hmm, okay. Well, make sure you take care of yourself. Don't let these people stress you out because you know we a handful and he just laughed because yeah my family is definitely a handful to say the very least but I am definitely going to miss my uncle Rick he's been around my family for about 37 years so I'm 47 so he's been around since I was 10 and actually my very first memory of him was him coming to my granny's house with a cheesecake because he worked at a hotel and he would make the desserts when they would have dinners and stuff like that. So he came in with a whole cheesecake with cherries on top. I'm a fat girl, so I guess that would be my memory (laughs) of food, sweets no less. But I'm definitely going to miss my Uncle Rick. But his work here is done, and now he is resting and not in any more pain. So I just consider myself blessed to have one more angel watching over me. Okay, enough of the depressing talk. I also had a baby while I was away. Okay, now, you know I'm just playing. I did not have a baby, but one of my doula clients had a baby. And so she delivered a Happy, healthy baby girl, and I was so excited. Mom was a trooper, and the baby is 
so cute. She looks like a little doll with a head full of jet black hair. So I'm glad I was able to be there for mom and dad, especially during time of COVID when you can't really have a lot of family support around you or in the hospital with you. I'm glad I was able to help out where I could. So this season, I will be talking a little bit more about my work as a doula as well. Now, moving on to updates for season two. First, I'm not even sure why podcasts have seasons. So I'm not sure if there will be a season three or if I'll just keep going until I feel like taking a break and consider that the end of a season. I don't know. I still don't know how all of that works, but I'll just keep going until I feel like I need a break. Now, I will say I did not get as much accomplished as I hope to, but what will remain the same is that I will do solo episodes and have guests. I will still try to keep the solo episodes around 30 minutes. Guest shows will be longer, and I may break them up into two episodes if needed. I could have used more time off, but if I'm being honest, I would have found other reasons for not getting things done. Plus, like I said, I miss talking to you. However, I did get some organization to my life. You know, I finally started going through some of these gazillion boxes I have sitting in my house from when I moved out after having my roof collapse about five years ago. I even got a few pictures hung up on my wall. And I hate clutter. So that does not help my mental at all when there's just a lot of junk and stuff everywhere. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not nasty. I clean my house and do my laundry. It's just the putting stuff up part that needs work. You know what I'm saying? And the more stuff it is, the more overwhelming it becomes. Anywho, I'm getting off topic. I was able to get some things outlined for what I want to do with the show and guests I want to have on. I didn't get a chance to do a lot of batch recording like I wanted to but I do have a few recorded already. You may have noticed that I updated my logo. I really like the red one that I had, but mainly because that picture is dope, but it didn't really prominently feature the name of the show. It's on the cassette, but my name is bigger than anything. And that's not really good marketing. Plus if I decide to promote the show By putting it on something like a shirt or a mug, I want people to know the name of the show. I did update the picture so that the shirt is purple to match the logo. Now, for those of you who like the red picture better, don't worry. I still have that one and I can use it whenever I want. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Which one do you like better? Let me know. Send me a message or leave a comment and let me know which logo you like better. Because it's my show. I can always change it back. Speaking of being more marketable, I changed my Instagram handle to at T underscore side podcast. Because whenever people would see me online, they would say, hey, the side podcast. And that annoyed the out of me. You know, and that's not helpful when they don't know the name of the show. You can still search for the T-Side podcast to find me, though, on Instagram and on Facebook. I also changed the intro and the outro. The intro just gives a brief description of what the show is about. And I updated the Instagram handle in the outro. If you've been on my Instagram and Facebook pages, you may have noticed that I'm posting more content on there. And they say consistency is a major key to a successful podcast. And I will say that since I started posting more, my interaction and followers have increased as well. It's just hard for me to create content to post with my work schedule. So right now, I mainly repost and share stuff. I am working my nerve up to go live on Instagram soon or possibly one of the Zoom recordings with a guest, I will do it live or post it live on YouTube so you can actually see us during the podcast instead of just the audio. And in case you did not know, 
the audio version of the podcast is actually on YouTube. So you can go on YouTube and search for the Teesside podcast and you will find the episodes on there. And just recently, I am now on iHeartRadio. When I started the podcast, everyone said that I needed to release episodes every week if I wanted it to be successful. Well, unless someone is going to come and edit these episodes, create at least three promos a week, or pay for somebody to do all that for me, you will just have to settle for this one woman show over here. I will try to release them every week since I'm ahead on recording, but if it gets to be too much, then I will let you know and go to every other week. Either way, I want to be consistent and I really want to do more fun stuff. So I will be telling some stories of my interesting adventures, attending concerts and working as a social worker. And of course, I will definitely still be talking about music. I'll be breaking down some song lyrics with friends, doing some trivia, and adding a couple of new segments. I watch a lot of TV, and now that all the Marvel shows are coming on and movies, I want to do a little bit more discussion of different episodes and TV shows that I watch as well. And another segment that I will be introducing is called, Does That Make Me Old? So let's go ahead and kick this one off. Because I often find myself saying, I'm too old for this shit. Or, Lord, I feel old. But honestly, most days, I don't feel like I'm that old. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So I'll need your participation for this one, okay? Recently, I was at a friend's house. And they had one of those recliners that help you go all the way up to a standing position. I think they call them a lift recliner. I've been wanting one for years. But I was probably in my 30s when I first saw one at somebody's house. But now that I'm closer to 50, which for the record, I don't think is old. I'm thinking about investing in one because it will definitely come in handy when my arthritis flares up and I have trouble moving or getting up out of a chair. Literally, sometimes if I've done a lot and I sit too long, my whole body will get stiff which is the horror of rheumatoid arthritis, everything gets stiff. I recently got a a utility cart that I had to have some help putting together. In between two people, it still took three hours to get it done. But it was a lot of using the screwdriver and, you know, laying on the floor and picking things up. By the time I was done, I was spent. I fixed something to eat. I sat down. Probably 30 minutes later, I went to get up. My whole body was stiff. I was like, ooh, now I got to go soak in some Epsom salt. Before I even finished, I knew that was going to be a problem. So I feel like the chair would really come in handy. Plus, it's got a heat remote on it. So that would feel really great on my bad back. And not to mention, it was fun. You know, you could sit down and you could lay back, put your feet up, and... Then you can sit it up and your feet will go down. But then the whole chair lifts up almost to the standing position. It was so fun. So my question is, does that make me old because I want one? Or does that make me lazy? (laughs) Or does it make me just a big kid for wanting a chair that does cool stuff? I don't know. Let me know. Now, February is Black History Month and Heart Health Month. So I wanted to just remind you that nearly 80% of cardiac events can be prevented. And cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in one of three women. African-American women are affected at a disproportionate rate. So I will share some stats and ways to be heart healthy on my page. And since it is Black History Month, I would be remiss if I didn't give you at least one Black History fact. Now, let's be clear, though. I celebrate Black History every day. But on February 23rd, 1989, the Grammy Awards presented the first award for best rap performance to DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince for their song, Parents just don't understand from their debut album, He's the DJ, I'm the Rapper. The other nominees in the category were 
JJ Fad for their song Supersonic, Those Everlasting Ears, LO Cool J, Going Back to Cali, I Don't Think So, Salt and Pepper for Push It, and Cool Mo D's Wild Wild West. By the way, all of those songs were my jam. Had the whole dance routine for the Wild Wild West that I would do with my friend. And everybody tried to do the push it dance. If I tried it now, yeah, you might as well just leave me on the floor because I wouldn't be able to get back up. <laughs> just thinking about that makes me laugh. But anyway, although they won the award, they boycotted the show after finding out that their category wouldn't be televised. Despite being honored, their real goal was standing up for their genre. I think it was just um, lack of knowledge. Yeah, the ignorance on the part of Naris. They, they don't know anything about rap music. And our boycott was to open their eyes to rap music so next year some rap group will be able to perform on the Grammys and the, the award will be televised because the music is large enough and important enough to be on that show. Seems like the Grammys listened. The following year, 1990, they began televising the rap category. This is a milestone in our career and it's a milestone in the, the history of rap. Of the nominees, Kumo D was the only one who showed up and even performed at the awards. He even took the place of the Fresh Prince for presenting the award for the male R&B category. Subsequently, LL Cool J has gone on to win Grammy Awards and even hosted the show for five consecutive years from 2012 to 2016. He's ranked number three in the list of people who's hosted the show the most times. So that's it for today. Let me know what you're looking forward to the most this season. And don't forget, let me know which logo you like better. And until next time, be good to yourself and be good to each other. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Teesside Podcast. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at the Teesside Podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss any of the episodes. And be sure to tell a friend about the show. Until next time.